Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm doing another interview. My guest today is an actor. They've appeared in shows such as Waterloo Road and Emmerdale. Today they're going to be coming on and telling us more about their acting experiences, their career, some advice and some behind the scenes stories too. So today Zeri will be joining me and let's find out a bit more about herself. Hi Charlie, it's Zoe Ojuanika here and um, thanks for having me on your um, podcast. I'm really looking forward to this interview. So yeah, let's get started. Thank you so much for coming, Zeri. So today, obviously I'm interviewing you and I've got 10 questions based on your acting career. So my first question for you is, when did you first get into the acting industry? So I started acting from a very young age. Um, I went to um, like a drama school, a stage school from the age of four. Um, I started off doing things like ballet, tap and jazz. And then that kind of evolved into doing a little bit more drama and um, doing competitions and that kind of thing. So I definitely had a little bit of experience from being quite young, but I didn't actually go into um, TV until I was about 17. So I was at college, I was studying my A-levels and um, I decided to get an acting agent. Um, who were based in Warrington at the time and yeah I started off doing extra work which is like background artist work um, and I did all sorts from working on Coronation Street, Emmerdale, Hollyoaks and at that time it was just a really good opportunity to be on a set um, you know on TV shows that I'd basically grown up watching so for me I got a lot of fulfillment out of doing that um, I did kind of get to the point where, as I started to do it a little bit more regularly, I was looking at the other actors thinking, how do I get into there? How do I get into, you know, getting, you know, more featured roles? Um, so I left the agency, went to a new one, and I got my first featured role at the age of 24, actually, playing Celine Dixon in Waterloo Road. Yeah, well, that's great that you've obviously done all of these things. And my next question for you is, what was it like playing Marcia on Emmerdale? It was amazing playing Marcia on Emmerdale. I think it was the first role that I'd actually ever had playing an adult. So a lot of my roles in the past were obviously um, like Celine Dixon was um, 14. Um, I played, a, I've always played younger than what I actually am. Um, I'm 38 in April, so um, I'm starting to just about get roles now, which are more age appropriate to me and um, you know, what I do in my everyday life. Um, so yeah, Marcy was the first role that I had that was, um, you know, a little bit more mature. She was career driven. She was a magazine editor. Um, she was very sassy, very motivated um, I could relate a lot to the character as well so it was amazing I loved playing her um, and I just loved working on the set of Emmerdale as well. Yeah it does sound like Emmerdale was a great thing for you what was it like auditioning for Emmerdale? So I actually didn't audition for Emmerdale and um, the story behind that is um, I got cast on um, Coronation Street um, my little boy played um, George Appleton, who was Mary Taylor's grandson. They came in as the App Appleton family. So I was actually chaperoning him from the age of nine months old. So I'd actually signed myself off doing any work, going for castings, because um, it was taking up quite a lot of time taking him to set and everything like that. So um, it was actually the casting department that came to me and said, look, we've got this role. They knew that I'd acted because I'd done loads of auditions for them previously. Um, and they came up with this role to play, um, I think the first one was Robert's Nurse. So I had some really lovely scenes with Kim Marsh. I auditioned for the role. Um, and the guy that auditioned me um, was called Neil Alderton. And he is an amazing director. And he works on all sorts of different soaps from Coronation Street to EastEnders. So I auditioned for him and I got the role. A year later, he asked me to come back to play Liz McDonald's nurse, which I gratefully accepted. And then um, the day before um, I was due to fly to Marbella for a month with all of my family, I got a phone call from Emmerdale and it was Neil saying, I've got this amazing role for you. It's perfect. It's right up your street. Um, she's called Marcia um, and he read out the character and I was like, wow, this is an amazing opportunity. Like but I'm going to Marbella tomorrow, so I don't really know what, you know, what, what to do. Um, and he just said, well, look, we want to offer you the role. Um, we've written it specifically for you. Um, so I did. I accepted it there and then. I got my contracts and um, scripts sent within the same day. 
I flew to Marbella and then, um, yeah, I flew back twice to film, uh, flew into Leeds Bradford and went straight back to Malaga. <laughs> so I did that twice, um, filming the role of Marcia. And it was great. It was a lovely opportunity to work with a cast, with a director who I've worked with previously. He knew um, what my expertise was um, and it was just nice that he'd asked me to come back, but on a different show. Yeah, it sounds like Emmerdale was a fantastic experience for you and it's great obviously that you got the chance to do it even though you were travelling back and forth. Um, and my next question for you is, do you have any advice for people who want to get into the acting world? Yes, I would say uh, the best advice I could give is just to persist, persist, persist. It's a very, very tough game. It's very competitive. Um, you do get a lot of no's and you can't let it put you off. Over the years, I've had so many auditions that I've not got. Um, I've had, um, you know, no feedback as to whether it's because of, you know, I'm too short or I'm too young or I don't look old enough or my hair colour or my skin colour or whatever it might be just wasn't right. And you can't take these things personally. You've got to see it as they are looking for a specific person. And the minute you walk into that room, they know straight away whether you're great for the part or not. So it's nothing to do with you personally. And over the years, I think... I have taken that person. I think anybody would, especially going into acting, you know, as a as a teenager, you know, you're just about trying to find yourself as, you know, a human being and what you want to do in the future and who you are as a person. And, you know, being told no at such a young age and not really getting, you know, any kind of feedback as to why can be quite tough. So you do have to have a tough skin. You've got to be motivated. You've got to be driven. Um, you know, I've had a lovely little break um, from acting. I I started a family um, set up a few businesses um, and I'm ready to go back into acting now and again I've got to get back on that conveyor belt of doing workshops going for auditions and um, you know meeting casting directors again and um, even big big actors in Hollywood still have to audition as well so yeah it's just a case of you know enjoying the um, you know the opportunities when you do get the roles really take them in enjoy being on set enjoy working with amazing casting directors and an amazing cast but then when you don't get the roles don't get too you down about it always remember that those feelings and how you feel at that moment in time is only temporary and you know the lows don't last and sometimes the highs don't last so just appreciate all the good and don't worry about the bad yeah thank you so much for that advice i think that advice is uh, really great and i hope lots of people can hopefully be inspired by it and hopefully take something from it so yeah thank you so much for sharing it so my next question for you is as well as acting you are the founder of the red russian travel would you like to explain what that's all about yeah so i basically like i said previously um i've set up quite a few different businesses over the years and all of them have been designed to facilitate really my acting my acting always has come first um and um the first company that i ever had was a pr company called red russian pr and after filming waterloo road and you know being out of work for um quite a long time i needed kind of to still you know pay the bills and you know um pay the rent and you know try and get some kind of an income so i started doing freelance pr and my first ever client was actually mike richards who played for man city at the time and um, so i ended up working for quite a few footballers either pushing their personal brands any charities that they wanted to do charity events and then that slowly moved on to actors fashion designers restaurants bars and um, i was doing loads of different freelance work at the time using my connections within acting using my connections within in, um, you know celebrity and media and doing quite a lot of PR for them um, then I had a family and I couldn't obviously juggle the two so I took a break from PR and then when I was on maternity leave um, my husband proposed and I was looking for somewhere to go on a luxury hen party there wasn't anywhere really that um, there wasn't anyone kind of um, party planning basically hen parties so I came up with the niche to do that and that's how Red Russian Travel was kind of born really um, unfortunately it's died a very quick death in lockdown so um, yeah I'll definitely look to pick that up when things start to get back to normal but yeah I've always had loads of little side projects loads of other little businesses I love being creative I love exercising and um, different opportunities when they arise but yeah acting's always been probably you know my first um, love my first passion and everything kind of you know will facilitate that really 
yeah, it's great that you've also got businesses as well as acting. And I think it's great to kind of be busy and to try out new things. So that's really great for you. So my next question for you is, what was it like being on the set of Coronation Street? Well, Coronation Street for me was like an absolute dream. I'd actually auditioned for Coronation Street so many times and not got a part. So when my son was in Coronation Street, I was more or less on set with him every week. And I got to know everyone in casting. I got to know everyone in accounts. I got to know everybody in Coronation Street. So when I got the opportunity to audition, it was actually a very easy process because I did know them. And, you know, my little boy was in it as well. So for me... It's actually weird, but it was my son that actually gave me the opportunity first. I, I was really, really happy that he got cast in Coronation Street over me, over myself. Um, he actually has had a better um, career than me actually in acting, if you add it all together. Um, but yeah, when I took him for his audition, we literally got him in his car seat, drove out of um, Trafford Wharf. And by the time we got to the Man United um, Stadium, I'd already got a phone call saying that he'd got the job. So um, for us, it was literally like being on set every week with him. So I kind of got to get that lovely fulfilment of being on set, even though it wasn't me, it was my son. Um, but having a baby on set, is hard work. It's um, challenging and it's um, stressful because the teething and sometimes not in a great mood and you know sometimes I don't want to sit in a buggy or a high chair and they might cry or but Romeo was amazing he was really really good but as a mum you still get the anxiety of having to hand your child over and there's like 50 people around trying to you know get this scene done and you're just praying that your child doesn't cry and ruin the scene. So when I actually got to film Coronation Street, just me, it was so nice to go into the dressing room, into the green room with no baby, no like baby porridge and snacks and bottles and everything. I just walked in, sat down, had a nice cup of tea, waited to go on set and it was just really relaxing because I was used to going on set anyway with Romeo, but it was just really nice and relaxing to do it, just me and just concentrate on, you know, what I had to do that day. And um, funnily enough, they actually scheduled my scenes and Romeo's scenes on two different days that we could both perform. So yeah, no, it was good fun. Yeah, it does sound like it was great fun. And my next question is kind of going back to when it, you were on Waterloo Road and it is, what was it like playing Celine on the show? Um, Celine was a really interesting role because when I actually auditioned, there wasn't much of a backstory to Celine. So I didn't know like where she'd come from, like who she was. I did the audition and I think sometimes when you go into an audition, you come out and you kind of know whether you've got the role or not. You kind of get a vibe. And with that audition, I just thought, no, nah, I don't think I've got it. I, I didn't feel like I could put too much into it because there wasn't really much um the, the script wasn't that 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 great it wasn't a great audition script so at the time I was a little bit like I'll just go in and see you know hope for the best anyway I did get the role in the end which was amazing and um I think once I'd done the first season um she was very kind of much in the background she was you know with Dante and Chloe and Janice and everyone else so she was kind of like not really at the forefront there was the anti, there was the bullying campaign that she did, uh, the Mika bullying campaign. So that was a nice little bit of a juicy storyline. And then obviously, um, you know, the series after was the big attack scene. And um, that was really, really good because I managed to do something that I'd never done before. And um, really kind of get into a little bit more of a gritty um, part of the character. Um, you know, the vulnerable side, um, you know, rather than this strong um you know um go getting like you know young teenager we saw a very vulnerable side to Celine when she got attacked um so it was nice to kind of have those waves of different you know angles to play her but she was she was great and you know I had to wear a school uniform every day at the age of 24 so it was it was good <laughs> it was good yeah, it does sound like a really good experience. I actually do have a question about one of the scenes you're in and it's the fire scene. I'm wondering, was it an actual fire or was it like a fake one? Yeah, so it was an actual fire. Um, but what they did was they used certain parts of the school um, and um, I think they used like a foam over the walls and things like that so that nothing gets damaged. We filmed our scenes separate 
so I think they did a full day where they were filming all the fire scenes where nobody, no actors, nobody was on set. And then we filmed our scenes with our dialogue um, separately and then they kind of just merged them together. So yeah, there's a little bit of a scoop. <laughs> My next question is, do you look up to anybody in the acting world? Do you know, it's, it's interesting because um, most people would think that I'd say, you know, like a big Hollywood actor or something like that. But for me, um, I'd probably say Michelle Keegan. And the reason being is because she started out at the same time as me. And we actually had the same agent at the time. Um, and she'd never done acting before. This is This is an interesting story. She'd never done acting before. She had her first ever audition for Coronation Street and she got the role. So she's very much one of the lucky ones. Um, but I think she's a fantastic actress and, you know, fair play to her. She played an amazing role in Coronation Street. She left to go on and do other things, which a lot of actors do in soaps because, you know, they, they do kind of get a little bit bored. Um, and she's nailing it. She's doing so well. And I think that I can relate to her because she's the same age as me. Um, you know, we started out at the same time. She's very career driven, very motivated, very driven. Um, and I really rate that about her. So yeah, she's probably like my idol. <laughs> yeah, well, she does sound like a, a really great idol. And yeah, it's very interesting that you obviously, you were both signed to the same person and everything. But yeah, it sounds like she's doing amazing things like you. My next question for you is, have you had to overcome any hurdles in your career? I wouldn't say hurdles. I'd say that, you know, with with the acting industry, it's um it's very stop and start. Um, ninety percent of the time, you know, many actors are out of work, so we're always kind of having to do other things to get an income or other things to keep ourselves busy. With me, the hurdles I probably have to overcome is just kind of keeping going um not falling at the first hurdle um there's been um a few times where i've kind of fallen out of love with the industry and i've very quickly fallen back in love with it and you know that could be because the way that the industry works is very cutthroat and it can be um you know quite disheartening sometimes and you kind of veer away from it and think oh you know i'm just gonna park that for now then you get your confidence back up and then you watch a movie and you think I love acting I really want to go back to it so I've had a very much of a roller coaster journey with um with acting and this time last year I got cast in Hollyoaks and um I was cast as a mother of three daughters so I went for the audition got the role um everything was great didn't hear from them for about three weeks which was a little bit strange because most production companies will send you contracts and scripts within a week. So they said it was scheduling issues and I was like, fine, no problem. And I contacted my agent and said, is something, you know, something's not right. Do they still want me? Like, you know, joking. Um, in the end, they decided to cast somebody else and it was down to um, something very simple of the fact that they couldn't find my three daughters of the same ethnicity as me. So I took that quite personally, if I'm being honest, I took it quite personally. Um, because for me, it was like being given a job and then that job being taken away from you because some of the other jigsaws to that puzzle don't fit. Um, so I was actually pregnant at the time. I've had my little girl now. She's nearly five months old. And as much as that experience wasn't amazing, like it did actually um, upset me for quite a while um, because I was a little bit gutted that I'd been given a role and then it had been taken away from me um, due to the fact that they couldn't cast, you know, three daughters of, of, of a black or mixed race heritage, which I found find bizarre because there's plenty of them out there. Um, so yeah, uh, that was definitely a big hurdle for me. And, um, you know, it was just over a year ago, but I still love acting. And even though that has happened, it hasn't stopped me from wanting to still go back into the industry. Um, you know, these things, unfortunately, in acting do happen. And it could be down to the fact that, you know, somebody's overweight or they're too slim or, you know, their face doesn't fit. And it can be literally that 
like black and white you've got to be able to understand that it's not anything personal it's that they are trying to build um you know a family or a character and it has to be quite cutthroat um it's happened to me plenty of times it happened to be literally just a year ago and it was a tough pill to swallow i'd put it uh, is is the best way to put it it was a very tough pill to swallow um and yeah it was just one of those things but a year later and i'm still raring to go so there you go yeah thank you so much for sharing that story and i think um it's great because you obviously put some advice in there and i think hopefully people will listen and understand that if you do get something and then it gets taken away it's not your the end of your career there's always more chances to have so i have one more question for you and this question is switching back to waterloo road and it is do you have any behind the scenes stories from the show well when we used to go on set we used to have two green rooms and there was one for the adults and one for us kids and um the adult green room was very civilized and people would be in there like reading books and reading the scripts and our dressing room would literally be like empty bags of crisps and cans of coke and music playing like we had so much fun and obviously a lot of us were really really good friends like me and chelsea healy were really good friends but we never really had that many scenes together so we'd text each other and find out when our call time was we'd go in the green room we'd have a laugh we'd be you know doing whatever and then we'd kind of go and do our scenes and come back in so our green room was kind of like our hub um it was like our common room it was like our social you know um so it was a massive massive social aspect of um of filming um but the the um older actors used to come in our dressing room because we used to have more fun than them and then obviously on the um you know the odd occasion going out we'd you know we'd all kind of go to the same bars and um and, and clubs together and there'd be a few that were uh, you know underage and we'd kind of hide them in our coats and be like no they're with us so yeah we all used to have like loads and loads of fun the adults the kids the teens we all were like one big happy family so yeah we just all were like having so much fun and um it was just a really really great time yeah it does sound like a fantastic time it's great that you were all a family and you got to kind of have a good time out of set as well um i do have to ask because i've spoken to a couple of um, other waterloo road characters and they both told me that they have had like ghost presences on set so did you ever have any spooky experiences on the set no i didn't actually there were rumors though that that school that there were ghosts on set like i'm not a big i'm not into stuff like that but there were stories and rumors going around because the school was obviously a real building it was a real school but a lot of it wasn't you so there were some corridors and some empty parts of the school we'd go kind of like you know um, walking down just for like a little bit of a chill or you know because it was such a big um such a big space um and yeah there was the odd story of like a few ghosts and things like that but i never saw any so i'm sorry i've got nothing to um add to that <laughs> that's okay yeah i was just curious to see if you had anything you were lucky <laughs> 100% if I would have seen a ghost I would have been like get me home there's absolutely no way I could have filmed with any kind of paranormal activity going on <laughs> yeah 100% so we have came to the end of the interview now it's been great finding more about yourself your experiences your advice your stories and it's been a real pleasure today thank you thanks for having me Charlie you're most welcome and also thank you to everybody who watched this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next week for another interview. Bye everyone. Take care.